So here we are, with me now writing the 15th Boku no Hero Academia video since I started my channels. This anime is currently third in my personal top 10 on my anime list, behind Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and Hunter x Hunter in second place. I cannot overstate my love for this anime, and I want to personally thank you all for taking this ride with me. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Oh, and one last thing, please be aware on this channel I no longer issue multiple wins. It's just easier to keep neat and tidier when done like this. So the most you'll see me issue is two wins. An easy win here for this OP, which has a song that when I listened to it a few times started to become incredibly catchy. Plus check out this section I'll slow down, just look at those amazing effects and this epic moment with All Might screaming, just send shivers down my spine. I mentioned this in season 2 but I'm giving it a win here because I'm pretty sure this is badass foreshadowing for later events. Ha! All those people who disagree with me when I said in my wins video that Stain had saved him. Well, here you go, and thank you, anime, so take a win. The fact that Midoriya is genuinely shown to have gotten bigger with more muscle in this new season. Honestly, that's something I'm not even sure I've ever even seen before. Ah, that voice is like melted butter to my grateful ear holes. Despite being slightly annoyed by being given a ton of info I knew and having two and a half precious minutes of the first episode eaten up by it, I can still appreciate the knowledge dump for forgetful people. <laughs> Animating multiple people moving in one scene. This funny as f art style change which makes him look even more like Saitama. For the incredible memory. God, I love the dynamic between these two so damn much. World building like a boss without shoving exposition into your face. I love the way that they keep this potential love interest relevant, once again not shoving it into our faces and changing the focus of the anime. Instead it's left in the background and the flames of the storyline are occasionally stoked to keep it alive in our memories. Now this guy and these moments are just straight up bloody hilarious. The Pussycats. Getting a great and very clear explanation here as to the plans to forward their training and with a reason which makes perfect sense. Yup, this still looks goddamn awesome. <laughs> Anime once again excels at its usage of limited but great looking CGI. <laughs> Dark Shadow, legitimately one of my favorite side characters due to the uniqueness of the quirk. The fact that there is a very subtle visible indication on almost all characters when they're pushed too far, from a stomach ache, to slight bleeding on the head, to ice on the cheek, or an injured arm on Bakugo for example. <laughs> Seeing everyone eating together as a group, which I strongly assert helps solidify them in our memories long into the future, with the prime examples for me being Steins Gate. <laughs> This funny shit. This sad as hell backstory is handled really nicely to avoid exposition and instead treat it like a solid side backstory. Epic foreshadowing. 
This montage giving us a great insight into not only the quirks that everyone has, but then the original and unique way in which each of them is working to improve their quirk. This kind of thinking is appreciated by me, because it shows the creator didn't just think up quirks, but then also went one step further, giving thought as to what would improve each quirk, even if it's simplistic. <laughs> This happening because it reminds me so much of the few times it happened in FMAB. This dude and his funny as hell introduction. Seriously, whoever thought it was funny to keep having Bakugo shout DAMN IT every now and then for comedic effect is an absolute genius. I love subtle stuff like that. <laughs> this music, and for the scene pushing his character progression to an excellent position before the big moment. The brilliant and unique designs behind these new villains, especially this guy. Todoroki so bloody cool. This amazing reaction and art style change. The fact that after just three episodes, they already brought the villains into it was greatly appreciated by this YouTuber who assumed at least six episodes would be somewhat uneventful. This for me legitimately never gets boring to see. Giving what turns out to be great character development even to what could easily be considered side side characters. <laughs> Having the foresight to turn this villain into the very same one who killed his parents. It serves to drive the very best moment of this season for me so far with his upcoming battle with our boy. Uh, oh, you look so bad. Seriously though, what a creepy and fantastic villain with an equally creepy quirk. This guy makes for a fantastic villain in this sequence due to his unyielding motive to simply cause death and carnage no matter what. On top of this, he's animated beautifully and voiced perfectly as well, and on that note I'll be pointing out a small verbal tick I particularly liked later on in this episode. Also pointing out his character trait here of being so matter-of-fact about why he does what he does. I think it's really quite interesting to have a villain who is a villain simply because he likes it. This music fills me with so much damn emotion. It's almost like I start to shake to a minor degree. Again, I just want to point out his matter-of-fact attitude during this battle and how damn refreshing it is. He knows Midoriya is now weakened and instead of engaging in talk, he's straightforward. No, I want to attack now all of a sudden. The excellent CGI and animation mixed together in this scene combine wonderfully to create a battle scene worthy of this anime standards. <laughs> Out of this world voice acting from all three of them, but especially Midoriya here. <laughs> Oh, the
The utter sadness of him recalling the words of his idol All Might and then having internal monologue as though he's literally saying goodbye for good to his mother and then finally calling out to All Might like some kind of a prayer to be saved. No word of a lie I had my hands over my mouth during the next few minutes when I watched this the first time. <laughs> And here is the verbal tick I noted and really liked for how unique it made him when combined with everything else I've said about him. His single-minded pursuit of murder makes him almost impatient verbally. I love it. This spinning rotation of the scene is incredibly hard to pull off and these guys mastered it. And then this moment, which no doubt had all of you freaking out as well. I cannot explain just how much I love that scene. His voice acting is just mind-blowingly great and that music in the background truly sets the heroic tone perfectly. This right here is a two-win moment. For the last time I'm shouting out this bloody music. My god, I love it. And also the fact that Kota's character progression has now been pushed to its next level in a way that I'd love to be similar to Midoriya's admiration of his own idol All Might. <laughs> My word, it's so damn good to see him back in action again for the first time since season 1 ended. <laughs> This guy and his incredibly unique personality for a villain. Kota's complete change of attitude is perfect here and when mixed with this godly emotional music it becomes a great moment. It's genuinely fantastic to see at least one of the villains strictly following the ideals of Stain to the point where he would save Midoriya's life. Once again giving us character progression for side side characters is for me personally one of the ever great evolving aspects of this anime. During season 1 we saw little progression other than in the center cast, but season 2 expanded this in a lot of ways to almost all of the class. Now season 3 seems to want to try and push even further and involve more of class B and it's doing a great job of fitting it all in so far. <laughs> This epic finale to their little battle. Once again I want to point out how epic his quirk is for all of its incredibly unique differences to almost every other quirk we've come across. I completely forgot to mention it, but adding another win for the great and very calming and catchy ED with its great song choice and lovely hand-drawn visuals. Giving a simple explanation of how his quirk works, something which I personally like because we've known very little about this dude since his introduction in Season 1. How Dark Shadow turned into an absolute f***ing legend and took this guy out with literally zero effort. They really did go all out on creepy and unique villains for this season. They knocked it out of the park with this girl and even added a cool mini backstory and character trait for her love for damaged men. My word, this voice actress does a great job of being creepy as fudge! For this interesting twist. I never, ever get bored of this move from him. In season 1 I jokingly called Midoriya Crybaby Midoriya and to see how far he's come now truly feels like character progression of the highest degree in my eyes. Oi, 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 oi! 
A lot of people were making comments on both the Sins and Wins first quarter that I should have mentioned that this guy is basically Deadpool and personally I couldn't disagree more. Literally they look slightly similar and that's it in my eyes. Either way though, getting to see his kind of split personality here at the start of the episode made me laugh so take a win for a unique non-Deadpool character. <laughs> I like this moment because it's like Ida's way of protesting having to stay inside the building in safety when he wants to go out and fight to save his fellow students. So instead of arguing outright like the others might do, he raises his hand and presents what he sees as a solid counter argument. All in all though, it shows he wants to help his friends, but also it fits his personality and style beautifully. Shoot! If you're ever wondering what an extremely good example of CGI usage in an anime looks like, look no further. Just check this sequence slow down, you can see a ton of effort went into making this scene look as good as it does with debris flying past the hero rescuing the two students close to harm and then the blue CGI attack fills up the screen looking wonderful. <laughs> I did a small little freak out of this scene, but purely because for some unknown reason I assumed he, as a teacher, to be weaker due to teaching the class down from the main one, and here he is being totally badass. And here is the first time we basically learn the villain's true purpose behind their tactics, one which I believe is telling of most excellent story progression. The mangaka could simply have gone for endless attacks on All Might and UA, but instead opted for this greater attack against the basic idea of heroes in society. <laughs> Not only is this scene great in general for the fighting taking place and students working together against their foes, but I also wanted to point out once again how great her voice actress is at times like this. So take two wins here. The fact that he appeared just in time and was brave enough despite almost being caught by Dabby earlier to act in this moment. Oh man, this gets an easy win all day long, and I especially love it because Bakugo doesn't seem to be saying it in a sense of, I dislike you, don't come, but I hear it more like, it's too dangerous, don't come. Do you guys agree or disagree with that though? Let me know in those comments down below, as I'm interested to see your thoughts on that, as it's quite important in terms of character building, I think. <laughs> Midoriya's reaction to failing to save Bakugo is another aspect of him that would probably make All Might so damn proud to have chosen him as his successor, because even though they truly do not get along, the fact that he couldn't reach him in order to save him tears him up inside like this, because above all, he's a true hero just like All Might. <laughs> I swear this shot should be in an art museum. Also adding onto this is Midoriya's statement that we heroes were completely beaten by the villains. At first I was going to sin it, then after thinking about it I saw that his statement is more about his ideals of wanting to save everyone and here he failed to do that. As such he sees the situation as a complete failure for the heroes and for himself. <laughs> Animating multiple people moving at the same time. <sighs> I love All Might. Taking the time to put together this lovely high up shot of the city. This is yet another great use of CGI, used here in the background to add realism without detracting from what you're seeing at the forefront of the scene. Anime's way of letting us know he didn't simply get healed and is now all better, but instead he had a rough time of it during recovery. <laughs> this first person crying almost feels like it makes the emotion more real when you then see it on his face. <laughs> People often talk about how All Might is like a father figure, not only to Midoriya, and by the way I've been saying that since season 1, but also to the whole class and it's little moments like this that exemplify that. 
この短期間で何度も大怪我してるけど君ねぶっちゃけ今回は火にならんほど重いよ Getting a good look at the heavy damage and scarring Midoriya has caused to his arms from his recent battle. Yet another aspect I adore about this anime is the permanent damage sustained and how it stays with the character. Compare this to, for example, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, where characters take massive damage and it quickly just disappears. Then following it up with a deadly serious explanation about just how bad a state his arms are actually in. Although it's very short, it's also to the point. I hope he gets a reunion down the road with Kota. For his mother's soft approach to this subject, and what I mean by that is that she knows how much going to the school and being a hero means to her son, hence the crying scenes from his childhood seen back in season 1 a lot, but she's also so incredibly concerned for him that she says this. For the introduction of another amazingly designed hero who has a fantastic and unique quirk which we will of course see soon. For this even more heavily detailed shot of the city. This is actually a pretty beautiful scene from Ida with the perfect music, I think. I've got to sadly admit to the world that my wife doesn't watch this particular anime. However, when I told her about this episode after it aired, I remembered being so excited because seeing this scene, I told her how it reminded me of the Avengers movie where you have so many fantastic heroes gathered together and I could barely contain my joy. I was really happy when this happened because I was kind of annoyed when he punched Midoriya and nothing was said about it and then they did this. Out of all of the funny things this anime has produced over three seasons, this is by far the best and makes me laugh so hard it physically hurts a little. Getting to see a razor head without a mask is awesome! This moment which honestly had me positive of which way the story was going to progress, only for them to utterly turn it around within the next three episodes in such a massive way. This has honestly got to be one of the most captivating heroes versus villains arguments in modern history. It's not simply bad guys versus good guys, but there's an ideal being questioned, fought against, and defended on all sides by both parties and elements inside of them. It's storytelling from a masterful standpoint, in my opinion. <laughs> Bakugo's amazing reactions here after being freed earn him a big fat win for proving his allegiance beyond any doubt to the hero society. Honestly, when this moment happened, it made my feelings towards him improve massively. I am so very glad that this anime finally began to openly acknowledge Bakugo's spates of extremely poor behaviour. I'm sure a great many of you who've watched all of my Sins episodes have heard me mention how unlikely it is that it'd go under the radar constantly, so this is finally showing us that it's noticed by the school and by the public and media at large. You've got to hand it to Bakugo for his ideals. I believe he literally does mean that even if faking his position might give him a chance to escape, he would sooner just fight and be upfront about refusing their offer than lying about it. This moment right here shows how far he's progressed as a villain throughout the past three seasons, going from almost a spoiled child desperately seeking the death of All Might and becoming extremely agitated when his false hand was knocked off of his face, to now keeping his cool and maintaining his composure. Yuuchou ni settok shite rare nai. Sensei. 
This is very interesting and something I've been pondering for a while, and that is, has All For One actually given him any additional quirks? Obviously, I would like any manga readers to avoid any and all spoilers in the comments, but it makes for a good discussion for anime-only fans for sure. I was practically shaking with excitement at this. This bloody excellent scene of All Might crashing through the wall like that is honestly not something I'm going to forget for a very long time. Getting to see these three and soon to be four taking on the villains inside together is a true joy to my heart. Because we are here. <gasps> Mixing hand-drawn animation with CGI to an excellent degree. God, he's so imposing and epic in this scene. My words, that is such a unique quirk. This sentence and others he mentions later on that I'll point out as they come are very eerily similar to All Might's own sayings. On top of that, we get another tidbit of information about how he turned out the way he did, which I strongly am still assuming has to do with All Might failing to rescue either him or someone he loved. Lastly, I'm giving a third win here for this creepy and brilliant piece of music which fits all for one to a T. <laughs> It is extremely hard for me to effectively write a script detailing why these scenes are so epic to me. Uh, so for my dumb brain, I'll keep it simplified. I love the sudden shout from All Might. It's like he knows he's running low on time and wants to end things. I love the changing music as the no moves appear and we start to know things are going to go badly. And finally, I love seeing All Might issuing out orders like this, which is something not really seen before now. <laughs> This here was absolutely my favourite moment of episode 9, All Might screaming in anger at the fact that he failed to rescue Bakugo who was so very close to him. I think it goes back to his saying, I can't rescue those I can't reach, but it always deeply affects him when he fails. It's as though he's also cursing his weakening body and finally how he's failing to resolve things for the heroes of the world as a whole. Beautifully done. For getting to see Genus and his quirk at work, and don't worry I'm going to give a win for the epic intro to All For One, but I feel it was better in episode 10 as we got a full view of him. Oklahoma Smash! Endeavor's overwhelming fire quirk reminds me a lot of Roy Mustang. Put an enemy in front of him and he's able to take it down pretty easily. No wonder he's the number two hero. Genist's actions which saved his fellow heroes and his unrelenting pursuit of justice and to take down the villain in front of him even knowing full well that this is far from just any old villain. And finally, here is the best view to give a massive win for what is likely for me personally the very best introduction of a villain in any anime I've ever seen. Also, we're getting some really nice foreshadowing here, I think going back to what I said before about Tomura getting additional quirks from All For One, and this basically confirms it for me now. This moment beautifully demonstrates these young students' fears when in the presence of a truly powerful villain who's evil to the core.
And here is that saying again, which I mentioned before. It's like his presence in the world now in his eyes is purely to undermine all might and one for all in the society of heroes by giving aid to Tamura, which uh, actually fits his name nicely. Conversely, you've then got all might and one for all whose statement of because I am here, which indicates his wish that his quirk be used to help all citizens. And here we are at the start of one of the greatest battles in anime history. Animated perfectly to show these two incredibly powerful foes going at each other and in addition also shows how brave and strong All Might is that he would face all for one in his weakened state without fear and does so with bringing him to justice in mind. <laughs> This needs to be placed somewhere prominent for all to see. God damn, I want this on the wall of my studio if it's ever placed onto a big ass wall scroll one day. I have literally no idea why, but I'm straight up dishing out a win for all my doing a getting ready to fight hop. To see for the first time All Might having such a difficult time against the villain is exactly what helped to make this episode and the next perfect for me. I, it gave me the same nervous feeling as episode 12 of season 1 knowing All Might was short on time against Nomu but times like 5 because I know he's far weaker now than he was back then. <laughs> This little statement almost sounds as though All For One can not just take and dish out quirks, but can also multiply the strengths of the quirks he holds, perhaps at the detriment of his own energy or something. My word, this is so goddamn beautifully animated. Bloody good on you, Studio Bones. <laughs> Bakugo pulling out all of these epic moves to keep away from the enemies surrounding him. Midoriya doing something which back in Season 1 meant nothing, but now his precise calculations and thought patterns to find the best route to victory are truly shining. Well, for this whole sequence, I suppose all I can do is give a very rare two wins for what is a great plan put into action perfectly, and for the fact that Bakugo responds the way they wanted him to, resulting in a successful rescue attempt. <laughs> this is such a great moment, I swear, and she must have a killer headache after that. for the epic style in which Gran Torino arrives to the battlefield. God, this is awful because we soon find out who exactly he is and yet he sees Awful One as a father figure. This has got to be one of the best storylines of this anime, where the mangaka actually wrote fear into Tamura that he might lose his father. It's actually hard to explain just how well written this is to be honest. This moment here really got me because it reminded me of the first time that Midoriya used One For All and got an injury that was animated much like this. For me it was a symbol of the ever weakening state of All Might that led me to feel even more worried. For this epic music which you best believe I've listened to on YouTube a total of 900 times! With all of All For One's taunting, he actually makes an evil and twisted legitimate point. All Might is constantly being forced by his dirty tricks and unrestrained power to be careful of those around him. All For One doesn't care about civilian casualties or killing anyone. I don't think I've ever seen this point made by a villain during a battle, and it's a great point to show just how evil he is that he taunts All Might with it. Also, I wanted to add another win here for another chunk of the fantastic music blessing this great anime and just how well it fits. Mm. 
Also, also another win for the rescue of Gran Torino by All Might and how beautiful the entire scene was animated by the talented Bones crew. For All Might's exceptional speech here, I don't think I've seen him this mad looking since he arrived to help the students fighting back in Season 1. This attack for me is probably the third best animated of the entire battle with the best two coming up next in episode 11 and Jesus the voice acting is as always from All Might's voice actor unbelievable. It's been a few weeks now as of writing this script but to the best of my knowledge when I saw this I actually had my hand over my mouth because I was so filled with worry for All Might. And then that worry I was feeling grew even worse as the reality set in that All For One was still alive and well. <laughs> Foreshadowing what ends up being an amazing series of flashback sequences for a character we've known nothing about before now and take a second win for this beautifully put together image of ill. A young All Might. It's also amazing that they chose to use the same music from his own encounter with Midoriya. All Might's reaction to this evil speaking the name of his former master and a second win for this absolutely gorgeous music which again I've listened to so many times on YouTube. I was so annoyed at the helicopter crew for filming all of this, but then it does lead to one of the best moments of solidarity with the heroes and more specifically All Might himself. But this win here is for Gran Torino's quick thinking. That this statement was made, despite the fact that it's sometimes ignored, and thankfully so given the fantastic exchange that does take place. But it's good to see an anime trying to move away from opponents chatting during a battle. Gran Torino can take another win for his rallying speech, one that serves to keep All Might invigorated in his current battered state. This sequence showing the community at large seeming to be losing faith in the society of heroes and All Might only makes what happens later that much more special. This was quite a telling moment for me in terms of the anime's brilliant storytelling elements that here you have a truly evil villain stating his own burning hatred for All Might. Once again, All Might is forced to sacrifice even more of his body and small amount of remaining power in order to save a civilian caught up nearby as All For One can freely attack without care. I found this moment to be crushing because after all of this time of hiding it, the secret was out for the world to see. All Might's incredible resolve and dedication even in this incredible predicament. This revelation is an amazing twist that I literally cannot wait to see get played out over the whole of the anime. <laughs> <laughs> 
What I also adore about this battle is that it's not just petty insults or anything, but it's the fact that All For One is chipping away at everything that he knows makes up All Might's ideals and soul. He goes after civilians to anger him, he insults his former master and boasts of how he killed her trying to break him, he exposes All Might's weakened form to the world and mocks him, he tells him how his former master's relative is now his underling, and now he points out how All Might is no longer smiling. <laughs> The origin behind his trademark smile. The moment All Might is on the verge of utter despair and defeat. For this rallying cry from the people who upon seeing their deflated and beaten and broken top hero didn't stop to panic or criticise but instead turned to overwhelming vigour to cheer him on to victory and to save them all from despair. It's such an incredible moment to see Bakugo also joining Midoriya in doing so as well. Once again, Studio Bones knocking it out of the park with animations such as this and another win for All Might getting his second wind in this terrific battle of the ages. <laughs> Recalling the words of his fallen master and using his ideals to push his limits just a little further is just so damn inspiring here and then this music kicks in as well which is just god tier level. Oh my word I'm guessing this is in reference to the blow dealt to All Might by All For One six years ago? The arrival of the hero I love to hate and do still find to be a total badass, Endeavor, as well as Headshot. Getting to see Endeavor as he is younger and without his suit, they actually made him look so much like an older and more muscular Todoroki, and I'm loving it! This bloody voice acting and character building. I found this moment to be so damn thrilling going back to my earlier comment of getting a kind of Avengers feel from these episodes. It's kind of hard to continue putting into words the swelling of emotion that builds up watching all of these heroes we've come to know taking on this incredibly powerful enemy together and still not managing to land even a single hit on him. Oh, I legit freaked out a bit when I got to see him as a younger, albeit still old dude. That was really a treat to be honest. Not even going to lie, massively teared up at this whilst writing this script. That speech, the music, the emotion, absolutely incredible. This was most definitely a moment I've been looking to see, a time where we finally get a greater look at just how many quirks he's stolen and his ability to mix them together. I literally cannot think of a better villain's quirk than this for this anime. Take yet another win for outstanding animation right here and for attempting to once again get into All Might's head but thankfully this time failing.
What can you even say? Out of this world animation, voice acting? The truth is, it's simply put, just a thing of absolute beauty. That's because my bank wasn't in it! This excitement is unreal. Go beyond! Getting to see his incredibly damaged arm, just like Midoriya sometimes, but then transform into this. And here we arrive at the moment you've all been waiting for. This attack was so powerful the shockwaves actually hit my PC and broke the wind limiter restricting all winds to two. Studio Bones killed it, they knocked it out of the park so far it cannot even be seen any longer. All Might delivered such a powerful vocal performance and the energy was off the charts insane when backed up by such an incredible track and seeing one for all's tiny remaining flame explode into a massive fire was unbelievable. The wind counter will need some fixing, but for now, let's see where it ends up. Despite All Might clearly being so terribly injured, in order to follow his ideals no matter what, he pushes his weakened body even further by physically claiming victory for the heroes like this. Then we get this moment where he goes even further, probably using the very last amounts of energy he has to take this form likely for the very last time and manages to keep himself on his feet. His face here is perfect, he's so incredibly injured having pushed himself so far. <laughs> This famous line, told from one generation to the next as one for all is passed on. <laughs> for the end of All Might, probably the greatest hero of all time, for now. <laughs> Bakugo appearing to not be angry towards Midoriya in any way, but more sympathy, perhaps? It's funny that I happen to have mentioned all of this in some of my previous wins, and as I watch him win this today on the 23rd of June, they say all of this. That's pretty cool. I'm so very happy that All Might has Gran Torino to speak some sense into him because he's right. Meeting up for Cuddies is not going to solve the issue with him. And that's a massive win in my book. Character building without exposition is just perfect in my eyes. We don't have to have him say much, but from this we know already that Endeavor wanted to overtake All Might with him being at his best. Not in this way. This made me laugh way harder than I care to admit in a YouTube video. God, it's nice, albeit also incredibly sad to see him like this in his former glory one more time. The sweetness of this scene is overloading inside of my body and is likely to cause early onset diabetes. But seriously, what a beautiful scene once again, going back to the father figure statement I made like two years ago. Getting to see some of her background and family is really good because she's a character we've seen almost nothing of for three seasons so far. Hi. 
よろしくお願いしますバンバー I literally burst out laughing saying this. It was just so damn amazing to be able to see his mother being exactly like him. Hmm, different eye color, different hair color, different temperament. Could it be he's not his father? I always thought Muscular looked a hell of a lot like Bakugo, to be honest, but now I'm curious as anything. This fantastic reaction from both of them. They can take yet another two wins here. One for getting a scene of a caring parent desperately trying to do what's best for her son and to protect him even if she knows it may be heartbreaking. And two for Midoriya's most excellent exclamation and reaffirming his utter and unyielding commitment to becoming a hero no matter what. It's hard to even write the script for this moment, but once again I'm adding another two wins for this beautiful moment. Getting to see All Might humble himself in this way, but also to see Midoriya's mother tell him to continue on and protect his own life whilst helping her son was wonderful, instead of accepting his statement that he'd look after him even if it meant giving his life for him. The greatest threat to the world's heroes and peace survives. We get the notion built up that Tamura is essentially the opposite to Midoriya now, just as All Might once was to All For One, and finally it finishes with this saying used by All Might. One thing I mentioned last season, I believe, is that I think it's really cool that they've committed after all of these episodes to still keep on showing us the person's name and their quirk. Yeah, we know them by now, but it really doesn't hurt to be reminded. Did they have to put a cloud going over the top? No, they didn't, but they did it for us to make it look extra saucy and nice as hell, and I love them for it. I guess even though I really disagree with it, I can fully get behind their commitment to ensure we the viewer know how seriously taken this stuff is, otherwise it could open up plot holes and stuff like that down the line I guess. This reaction and the mere idea that the mangaka came up with this result when he goes too far with his quirk is a stroke of genius. Even though he's doing it in his own brand of aggressiveness, this is still very indicative of a change in Bakugo we've all been wanting to see since the All For One All Might battle and rescue. Okay, so I'm writing this at quarter to midnight and it made me laugh so hard I heard my wife roll over in bed upstairs. If you want to show some appreciation for my hard work, hit that like button. You may as well hit the notification bell as well, since apparently subscribing isn't good enough for YouTube anymore. Okay, so I kind of take the piss out of this entire scene on Anime Sins, but this aside, I guess it's worth a win to get to see a little more personality behind each character in this way. I guess I'll drop two wins to cover them all, and anything extra will get a specific mention. Alright, I think their reaction and his statement here definitely enters the realms of Winworthy in my book. <laughs> Might sound weird, but as someone who now does frequent skits, I can heavily appreciate that someone chose to do an internal shot here and distort the sound until the door opened. I know that makes me weird, but doing skits nowadays on Anime Sins has me doing all kinds of weird stuff that normally gets unnoticed by most. <laughs> Whilst I do disagree with the sentiments behind this whole scene and that I feel if their presence wasn't at the scene of the battle, things would have been much worse in the end, I can appreciate good storytelling when I see it. Take a win for this new OP. Like, visually, it's very nice as all of them are, but the main thing for me is actually the song. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it honestly clicked with me mega fast for a change, as normally I need a few listens before I like a song. Stokushkendo, Tozan Sono Texeo Mirabu Potunino. 
情報力、判断力、機動力、戦闘力。Man, I really love how seriously the mangaka takes the entire idea of being a hero. Like, there's being invested in your story, and then there's this, which few others replicate and or get right in the first place, that truly makes a great anime, I think. So, you Getting to see some examples of characters pushing their quirks even further. Just briefly on this, I'm going to add a second winner ready because this manga code deserves mad props for not only thinking up all these characters, their names, stories, and quirks, and how they work, but then also thinking up multiple ways each quirk could be changed and improved. That's some dedication and ingenuity, I have to say. <laughs> As you guessed it, this is clearly a win. Huh? I'm glad that this one small piece of advice from him was enough for Deku to use his noggin to take his quirk to the next stage in what is actually an awesome moment. Ooh, ooh, yes. And take another for this priceless reaction. Kind of reminds me of the little blonde girl from Barakaramon when she's concentrating. Take another one for three continuous minutes of laughs mixed with actual cool designs in what must have been a nightmare to animate professionally given all of the many items inside the room. This is insanely fucking awesome. Take two here, one for seeing All Might's reaction, which kind of made me feel like he's thinking, You got the right idea, and I think you're gonna be alright. And also for how well animated this kick was, too. God damn, would you look at how badass my boy looks right here? He's got some Super Saiyan 2 action going on, and I love that look. This was kind of a sad moment for me. I can't even verbalize it very effectively, but I guess it boils down to the superb notion that the mangaka even gave thought to how All Might would be perceived by this group after his retirement. Brilliant. Any scene that this kid is in is pretty much worth a win, in all honesty. This is it ladies and gents, they're once again slowly moving the needle on the old love gauge for this anime. I gotta say how slow paced it is, is way more indicative of real life as well, which I like. None of this falling in love right away nonsense. <laughs> Definitely dropping one right here for the first interaction with this lad, whom after an insanely short period of time became someone I truly liked in this anime already. I swear, his personality thus far, mixed with his insane abilities, literally made him one of my favorites. I'm not even lying. <laughs> If you thought I might not give this a win, you were deeply mistaken. When this moment happened, a pretty wide smile developed onto my face upon the realization that someone even more powerful than Todoroki is out there. My goodness, even the way they animate him is done beautifully. He looks insanely powerful, even just from his walk alone. Bakugo being one of the few who actually sees past this guy's facade. Whilst the quality for obvious reasons does dip here and there, you've got to give them credit for a sweeping shot like this when they could have taken the easy route and just focused on the guy speaking, for example. Would you look at the design on this goddamn badass? <laughs> Seeing everyone use all of their different quirks in new ways than before to defend themselves from this initial onslaught. 
見えてきた I've been waiting to mention this for a while now, ever since watching the episode for Leisure the first time around. I've got so much overflowing respect for the mangaka, because not only did he come up with everything we've seen so far, but now the guy's introduced a ton of new characters with their own quirks and stuff. I just think that's amazing. I think I'd struggle to think up three unique characters, names, quirks, and backstories and stuff. <laughs> I'm not even sure why, but I like this guy's voice and the way he calls out this move. It's like he did it with a great amount of confidence or something, and thus it just sounds good. This for me is absolutely the coolest of all of the hero costumes I've seen so far. For real. Such a cool character. Yeah, I think they can take two wins for this, quite easily. Yeah, I think that's about right. Hmm, this is a significant amount of lower back boob to warrant a win, I think. That's a pretty much a scientific result I've come up with as well. Oh, don't mind me, just dropping another win for what is both an epic attack and defensive move, but also because it's animated so gosh darn beautifully. I've probably said it many a time over the length of three seasons, but once again, god damn I love how the Makaku came up with such a great way to stop Deku from being OP like this. This guy's funny and tired reactions to stuff makes for quite an entertaining few moments. This music track is definitely getting added to my huge playlist as soon as it's released. I'm clicking with this one right from the get go. Hot diggity dog, I love this anime showing off some of Todoroki's intelligence. That was really cool. I really cannot get over just how cool it is that out of the blue we're seeing all of these new characters. It's felt like it's been Class A and to a smaller degree Class B and the villains for so long that I'm just over the moon getting to see all of these new people now. Then we got this music. Oh man, I love it so much. They can take a second win here as well for this clever counter attack. It was like a JoJo moment for me in terms of not being able to figure out how they could win. Now that was a cool ass ending to the whole battle of this episode. Forgive the lack of wins, but honestly I didn't see anything I felt were like wow moments. And I want to stay honest to the process, you know? They've done an awesome job here of making this very much a creepy interaction, especially with that weird ass children's song going on in the background. Oh man, I just had a huge smile on my face during this entire sequence and that music as well. So to YouTube, Bakugo's gun type attack could potentially look pretty violent. So yeah, the winners for that, I just can't quite risk showing it is all. My word, how the hell does he even come up with all of these quirks? That is just insane. This is brilliant. He's one of the few characters who's never really felt like they've had much time to shine since the anime began. Oh my god, 
わざわざ範囲の狭い新技を連打したのは I didn't even think about that I guess this further adds to the notion that Bakugo is indeed growing as a person which is just great to see そんな力があれ当然だカリも自分のもんになったかよ Yeah that's a clear win as you can imagine 夢の形ねどうして僕はみんなと違うの Oh, damn, getting some backstory for him finally, so it's a win to see more of his character at last. Alright, they can straight up take two wins right here for this fantastic scene. In all honesty, I was pretty much blown away by what occurred, and it had one of my favourite musical tracks backing it up as well, no less. Wow, what a scene. Also, it's really nice to see the animal guy actually be useful, as up till now I've thought of him to be pretty useless. <laughs> Okay, putting aside how sometimes Minato can be a little irritating, this scene was nicely put together with this reaction to her sudden waving at Midoriya. Oh yeah, I forgot about this, so go ahead and take another win. Actually, just for kicks, I should mention to you all that since I was on holiday for over two weeks in Europe this September, I actually only saw this episode before leaving. And so all the wins and sins if you watch my other channel you'll be seeing for episodes 20 to 25 are all completely fresh for me. God damn, his presence and suit looks so cool and intimidating. Take a win, take a win, take a win! Once again, unlike so many anime, this one actually takes the time to animate characters physically growing as they run closer to the screen. Can't tell you how many times I've seen running on the spot and anime sins and pointed it out. And another one. I love seeing how Stain's legacy is so far reaching that even a student at another school has been basically impacted by his words and message. This is what I touched on a lot back in season 2, that his message, whilst delivered poorly by a villain, still did make a lot of sense overall. It's been great to see it being touched on even towards the end of season 3 and ensures we do not forget about Stain. Young All Might. Although Bakugo does go a little nuts soon, it's still nice to see him growing as a person and actually going as far as to use someone else and their quirk to get the job done. Once again, although he's reacting very quickly to the situation, so may say too quickly, I had forgotten that once again he tries to use the others around him to help get the job done instead of trying to do it entirely alone. Ooh, it's gonna be so good! <laughs> and another one for that, I think. <laughs> oh yes, get in there, Todoroki, my boy! Ah, a little bit of backstory, and although I think you'll agree, at least at this stage, that it's far from the strongest we've ever seen to validate the hatred he has for the family, it's still cool to see all the same. I guess I was hoping for a little more that justifies why he feels the way he does. Alright, fair enough, they added more to it literally right afterwards, funny enough, so take another win for surprising me, I guess. It's like they knew it wouldn't be quite enough as it was. Holy balls, they can take two wins straight up for that! Right, well as you were likely shouting at your screens during 1283 and 1284, they've most definitely covered everything that justifies how he now feels in my eyes. This was an excellent flashback sequence and it also helped to show us how far Todoroki has come as well, which sadly this guy doesn't know about yet. Absolutely brilliant and exactly what I've come to expect from this anime. 
あちょっとだいぶ末端しびれてるよね音波も振動 I know everyone had a laugh about Discount Deku and all that, but I think they've done an excellent job to really flesh out his quirk and his personality as well over the last few episodes. He's now his own character for sure. <laughs> oh, hot diggity, take yet another win for this. I love it so much. <laughs> Oh my word, that music as well. <sighs> Even though the whole front looks like they do, they still get props from me for doing everyone at the back with as much detail as they have. That must have taken forever. They can go ahead and take one here for the repair of this situation between these two, and also for how they've proven that character development in this anime is most definitely an ongoing process and not something which simply reaches a peak and ends for good. I think this long awaited moment definitely deserves a win now, doesn't it? Okay, so sadly two people spoiled this in my comment section on MA Sins, and I stumbled onto it whilst going through them and chatting with people when I was bored one evening. But having said that, still was a cool ass twist all the same, so take a win. Dude, this is such a clever way of justifying keeping them alive when you have this kind of protective tech to stop someone even as powerful as he is from using his quirks. <laughs> Just look at the amount of detail on the back of this chair! On top of this, take a second win for the whole conversation. It's really refreshing to hear of a villain explaining how they are a villain merely because they want to be one, not because of any particular catalyst. This guy's just evil through and through. Simple as that. That voice is just the absolute height of badassery. I love Sabbat as Alex Louise Armstrong, but for me personally, there is only one voice for All Might, and this is it right here. Man, oh man, the end of this episode was nothing short of being described as bloody tense as hell. What a brilliant end to the episode, and thankfully, I haven't got to wait a week to find out what happens next since I can just watch it right away. Tee hee hee. But seriously, I think they dealt with this excellently. It just wouldn't have felt normal for Deku to now deny it or something like that. Whew, wow, this is some powerful stuff. I can't really go through it sentence by sentence, but this is just unreal to see him talking like this for literally the first time ever. He's actually letting his emotions out and being pretty normal for once. I rarely ever do this, but this is getting three wins. <laughs> Okay, so I'm bringing this up again for the first time since part one and saying this. What the hell is this music? Some of you luckily will know and I want you to stick it in the comments below so I can grab it for my editing playlist. Many thanks in advance because it's beautiful! This for me shows yet again the mangaka wishing to make this process fairly slow and continuous. It's actually something I've adored throughout, that it's a slow process and not Deku just suddenly becoming massively OP after one season or something similar. And oh my god, if I didn't mention the excellent bloody CGI and art style here, I'd feel like a right idiot. Just look how stunning this looks when I slow it right down. Take two here for that. Oh my god, they recreated All Might vs. All for One. I'm sensing some strong ass symbolism here in the form of Deku finally breaking free of his fear of Bakugo and saying goodbye to it, almost like All Might did to One For All. Seriously, let me know all your thoughts about this in the comments though, as it's always interesting to see other people's takes on stuff like this.
I'm not sure that this event has propelled things to exactly where I personally was hoping for them to go, but what I can say is that it's definitely pushed it forward enough for now. Perhaps this links into one of my last statements about this anime being a slow burn in a way. They're not content with All Might making a speech, and then Bakugo and Deku were best buds, but instead there's still friction, but it's moving in the right direction. I love it. The fact that their relationship has now changed enough to allow for the two to talk about moves and weaknesses and stuff is brilliant. Talk about inserting some degree of realism when you add in <coughs> Moogle searches on Endeavor's name. I wonder if this is in reference to the movie. Either way, that's pretty cool. God, I'm showing my age. Holy crap, this is new and incredibly exciting and entertaining to see. I have a feeling this is the guy speaking twice from part one, but I'm not sure. Either way, getting to see this much of his life at the start of the episode is fantastic because this could make for an incredibly interesting prospect. The idea that this man has very mixed feelings, mostly sounding like he's on the side of the heroes whilst the inner voice sounds as though it's firmly in the villain camp. I can't wait to see how this plays out in all honesty. <laughs> I thought so, and hell yes, this character just became way more interesting to me. <laughs> For the introduction of yet more unique and different kinds of characters. <laughs> As I've said in the past, pretty much any scene with this guy ends up easily being worth a win. The fact that this guy is back after so long makes all of the time we saw him back in season 2 very much worthwhile. This guy has got to be something to do with All Might, right? Right? Mm, three new very powerful students! Oh yes, I'm getting fired up now, boy! Okay, so I can't show much due to lots of butts and lots of potential demonetization and stuff, but this was a pretty epic moment and this dude's quirk is just insane. I can't really see its downside right now, but I'm sure it must have one. My god, that quirk is just absolutely incredible. Again, I'm being careful what I show, but watching him move around so fluidly and attack is amazing. What a quirk the mangaka has come up with here. Um, her mask? <sighs> oh, hell yes. I actually tweeted about this yesterday, saying I'm writing this script and I hope to continue the yearly tradition if season 4 comes, and then I see this. I just hope it's coming next year. Well guys and gals, there you have it. This now makes 22 videos I've made on this anime across both channels, which by the way includes the exclusive Patreon OVA Sins video released this October. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed yourself in the comments and please consider leaving a like and maybe pledging on Patreon if you'd like exclusive videos and rewards and much more. The link for that is in the description down below. And of course, I'll see you in the next wins video. <laughs> Nathan Burr, Bird Without a Word, Tyler Warner, PK Fan, Ali50, Ryan Anderson, Isael Caldera, Chris Harris, Yona Shal, Manolo Saucedo Munoz, Luis Hernandez, Kim Munt, Jason Davies, The Element Taylor Wars, Manuel Morales, Conito, Dark Lord Bloody Soul, Blitz Cloud, Aura Keeper, Steelers, Amiga Keenan, Sentimento, Juffa6263, Master Tank, Kevin Nelta, Brendan Crea, Storm970, Gaten Gaza, Matt the Marshmallow, Kaj Vorzelman, Jordan Samuels, Sean Graves, The Epic Amanda, Crimson Shadows, Kyle Farmer, Oliver Gable, Kimi O, Adora Blue, Matthew Ditsworth.